Okay, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Teching Tries to Speak a Language He Has Never Really Been Good At. Although I did take one year of Spanish in high school, so I think that we can make this work. Se, 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 zero! Yes, there we go. Okay, now, today we're going to be talking about hollow abilities. So this will be the second part. We talked about hollow evolution a couple weeks ago. This will be about standard hollow abilities and a wrong car abilities specifically before we get back into the Espada. Um, some things to keep in mind, we're going to be talking about very basic hollow abilities here. Pretty much all the Espada can use these. All the wrong car can use these in some limited capacity. Cero, Bala, Sonido, Herio, uh, the Pesquisa, the Sensory Nerve, that kind of stuff. Stuff. Um, we'll get into the individual Arankar abilities as we get into their videos. So, like, Baragon, of course, has his Respira. Holly Bell can control water. She's a sexy, busty, shark dragon lady girl. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna get into that here. Um... I wanted to ask everybody a question, though, because Kubo is somebody that really enjoys using other languages as a, uh, a motive, as a backdrop for his, like, villain organizations that he creates, okay? So, not not even all villain organizations, because the um, Shinigami are obviously based in, like, Japanese, and then the Espada and the Hollows, you know, all together are Spanish, and then the Quincy's are, of course, German. So, I wanted to ask you, people out there that are Spanish or German or Japanese or any any language that you could speak that isn't English, what is a really badass attack name that you could create using your own language? And even if it's not a language that Kubo utilized, like French, for example, um, Kubo revealed once in an interview or something, he talked about how he really wanted to introduce a group that were uh, based in like French like phrases and attack names and stuff. So if you're French or if you could speak French, what's like a really cool bleach-esque attack name that you could throw out there in French. Because I don't know anything about French, period. Alright, so yeah. Alright, here we go. Let's start basic. Let's start with the Cero, alright? The Cero is your bread and butter when it comes to hollow attacks. It's the giant off energy beam. I had to bleep that because YouTube. I have like one F word allowance per video. Maybe I'll use that later on. But the point is, it's a giant energy attack. You know, Dragon Ball kind of started that. Every major shonen manga has to have somebody somewhere that uses a giant energy blast laser attack, right? Naruto, you got the Biju Damas. One Piece, you got Frankie and his radical beam. In Bleach, you got the Sero, all right? Regular hollows do not have Zanpakuto, so they have to have something in their repertoire that can actually contend with the Shinigami. Shinigami got magical swords that can transform into a variety of different weapons. Hollow's got the giant energy blast attack that can wipe out an entire city, okay? So, you know, even keel, I guess? Sero is just Spanish for zero. I at least knew that much. And in Japanese, it stands for hollow flash. Um, in the English, I think they called it like the doom flash or the doom blast. Kind of generic. I prefer the hollow flash because that's basically what it is. Um, the first time we see a Sero is when the Gileon appeared in Karakura Town that Ichigo and Uryu had to fight against, and it was like charging up a Sero, and if the thing went off, I mean, maybe it might have not have destroyed the entire city, because the powers of the Sero seem to be varied widely depending on the situation. Uh, sometimes the Saros are strong enough to just, like, damage a building. Other times it's like, oh, holy crap, this thing can level a mountain. Um, when you get into the Arongkar level, I mean, I'm sure they can control the Saros is perfectly fine. You know, if they want to fire off a Cero, I, I guess it's charge time. We're doing Mega Man logic with this, I suppose, where it's just like, all right, you know, Stark, if he wanted to, he can be like, all right, I can fire off a Cero that can, like, level a building, or if you give me, like, a couple of seconds to charge it up, I can, like, level a mountain with this ability if I really, really wanted to, okay? So, Saros come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, we got the standard Saro, of course. This changes basically in terms of color, depending on the Arankar that uses it. Um, so, like, Grimjow's... Well, Gr okay, Grimjow's Saro, his regular Saro is red. But there's other Saros, like Lilinette's Saro, that she used was, like, a lime greenish color. I think, like, Sung Sun's was, like, purple. So, they do tend to change color. The Granray Saro, though, 
that seems to change color based on the Espada. So, like, uh, Grimjow used the Grand Ray Cero, and that was blue, all right? Because the Grand Ray Cero is, an es is a Cero that only Espada are capable of using, and it's mixing their blood with the Cero itself, creating just a, a larger, giant fuck-off energy attack. See, there you go. That was the F-word allowance right there. Could have used it on Cero. I'm going to use it on the Grand Ray Cero. Oh, yeah. Um, the Grand Ray Cero, as it turns out, is one of the two things that Aizen forbids that the Espada, you know, they cannot do under the roof, under the dome of Las Noches. So, Aizen gets all the Espada together and he's like, Welcome, my Espada. Have some tea. Sit down. S you know, smoke a little something something. And let me explain to you the two rules I have under my dome. Alright? Rule number one. Espadas one through four, I better not be seeing any Resurrection bullshit. Rule number two, no Grand Ray Saros from anybody. That crap distorts reality. It creates a miniature black hole. I don't want that in my house, all right? Go outside and do it if you have to, all right? So Grimjow doesn't care, though, because Grimjow is just like, Ichigo, bring it on! And he just, like, uses Grand Ray Saro. And Holly Bell's watching the fight from a distance, and she's like, Grimjow, you idiot. Because, like, space itself begins to warp and distort when he uses that thing, right? Um, Grand Ray Saro, unfortunately, doesn't get used that much uh, by like anybody. Uh, how did did Harry Bell use it? Harry Bell didn't use it. Did Baragon? Baragon? Baragon didn't use a Saro at all. I think there might be an explanation for that in one of the um, the Can't Fear Your Own World novels. Apparently, we find out a little bit more about Baragon and those things. Those are getting an English release this summer. At least the first one is. So I'll read through those when they get an English release. But yeah, um, apparently though, Baragon is like this super ancient um, hollow who doesn't even fit really in the classifications of like at who. Just Vasto Lorde, like the the general idea is like he's so freaking old. He's like something else altogether. But yeah, the the King of the Hollows don't did not use a Cero that I can recall. Instead, he had the Respiro, which is arguably a much more you know useful ability because it's like an infection that spreads out and just decays everything. Um, now Stark seemed to be the Espada that had like the best Cero because that's all of like a lot of Stark's attacks were based around the. Arrow. And it's kind of something that's hard to really gauge, like, which is stronger, the, you know, Stark's, you know, giant, like, Cerro Moy... Okay, I think in Spanish, like, in the original... Well, okay, we're translating Japanese into Spanish into English into Spanish again, all right? So there's a bunch of different layers here, but I think the way that it was said in the original Japanese version of Bleach was Cerro... Uh, Mitore Jetta or something. And I think in the English they had the Spanish. It was like Cero Metroyetta or something of that nature. Just Meteor Jet. Meteor Jet Cero! When he fires those off against Shunsui, um, those are really powerful. He's firing like hundreds of Ceros off like every two seconds or whatever. But then Ukiora has the Cero uh, Oscurus, the, the black Cero. So, and then Grimjow and all the other spot have the Grand Ray Cero. So, which is... Where do these rank? You know, Cerro Oscuris or Cerro, um, Grand Ray Cerro or Cerro Muitriata. You know, how does this work, right? Um, it's kind of hard to gauge, but considering Stark was the one, you know, he had the pistols, he was firing off Cerros like crazy. Um, he seemed to be the one that was at least the most skilled with firing off Cerros um, with that. Um, the Cerro Oscuris that uh, Ukiora utilizes, he uses it. He doesn't even go into Segunda Etapa. So you, if he used it in Segunda Etapa, you could at least say like, oh, Oh, okay, that's a unique thing that only Ukiora can use because he's in this second release that most Espada don't have. Fine. But no, he doesn't use it when he's in Segunda Etapa. He uses it when he's in his regular um, release form. So it's, and he states it's like, this is the Espada Cero, Cero Oscuris. So it's the Espada. So the Espada have two different unique types of Ceros. They have the Grand Ray Cero, which is limited to just them. And then they have the Cero Oscuris, which is limited to just them. Maybe it's like, once an Espada goes into their release form and uses a regular Cero, it's the Cero Oscar. No, that can't be the case. Yeah, so I'm feeling like it's something they have to choose to utilize or choose to master. It seems like the Grand Ray Cero, 
the only thing, the only prerequisite for that is just like charge up a Cero and then mix your own blood with the Cero and it creates a Grand Ray Cero. Maybe Cero Oscuris, that's something you have to train with a little bit to master and Ukiora took the time to do that. Noitra or uh, Holly Bell or Baragon or Stark, they never like learn that or they like, like shoot it away for other abilities something of that nature that's the best i could do because only ukiora he's like he, he should have just said like this is my specialty saro saro oscuras i'm like oh okay that's something limited to just you but whatever um there's other types of saros out there there's neliel's saro doble which she absorbs a saro being fired at from another espada and then she adds her own saro on top of that as like a second layer and then fires it off as a big attack um Peshe and Dondochaka had the Cero uh, Sincrentio. Sing, sing, uh, it's, it's the Cero synchronization where they both use their Cero's, mix it together, and they fire it off against Sile. So, yeah, there, there's a bunch of different types of Cero's out there. Stark had the Mitorieta. Um, but, yeah, it all comes down to the giant energy blast, is the bread and butter of Hollows. And it's a pretty cool ability. It's neat to see all the different colors and varieties of Cero's that exist in the, uh, in the Bleach universe. All right. So, scaling that back. Back down a little bit, we get to Bala, which is just Spanish for bullet in Japanese. It's hollow bullet, okay? Um, this is essentially the really low charged Cero, where it's basically like uh, trading off power for speed. Because the Cero's, you know, even the weaker Cero's, they still have to do the... You know, they have to do the charge first, okay? And uh, Bala, as Yami explained, he's just like, you know, it's it's not as... It doesn't quite pack as much punch as a Cero, but it's 20 times faster! Boom, boom, boom! So it's basically like an augment to their punching, okay? So they can just... You know, it seems to be like a crackling electricity of, like, Riatsu around their fists, and it's just like, boom, boom, boom! And if it hits you... You'll feel it, but you're not gonna be like, oh, I took a, a, a hollow blast Cero to the face, you know? It's like, you take a Bala, you could probably take a few of those before you get knocked down, but it's just basically like, okay, I need something with a little bit more, you know, you know, not so much punch, but a lot more speed. That's the Bala. Um, the powers of the Bala seems to differentiate depending on the Espada, which makes sense. Um, you know, I really, like, honestly, I think this technique is pretty much just like, alright, do a Cero, but just fire it off as soon as you start charging it. And then that's what you get. You get a Bala. Okay, so anyway, um, like, Yami did this technique, and he was firing it at people, and he was like, oh, alright, I'll take some hits, and it hurts, but it's not like taking them out of the fight. Ukiora used this when he was bringing Orihime over to Wakamundo, like when or uh, Ukiora arrives in the Garganta, or not the Garganta, that was the Dangai. He arrived in the Dangai to kidnap Orihime, and she was being escorted by those two random Shinigami guards. Ukiora uses a Bala, and it just, like, obliterates half of the dude's chest, and he's like, ah, you must flee! So, yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it changes depending on the hollow, but yeah, that's the Bala. Okay, just a really fast technique. Um, their high-speed movement technique. Every group needs a high-speed movement technique, right? She Shinigami got the Shunpo, the flash step. Uh, the Quincy's got the Hiren Kyaku, the uh, flying screen step. And the um, Hollows and the Irankars have Sonido, which is just Spanish for sound. So, Sonido, so, Sonido, Sonido, I don't know. Um, and Sound Ceremony in Japanese. Not really much to say about this. It's a high-speed movement technique. Like, the description of the technique is what the technique does. Um, Bleach is a series where, you know, um, you have characters that can move really fast around each other to fight. You know, it's like, aha, I'm behind you. No, now I'm behind you. Oh, now I'm behind you. If the, the, the lesson to be learned here is if you're ever walking around your town, and you encounter someone that you think might have anime bullshit powers, um, a very likely thing to occur. Um, you know, the first thing you need to do is like, oh, that guy has anime powers. The first thing they're going to try to do is to just disappear in front of you, appear behind you, and like finish you in one attack. So that's when you're like, oh, anime power dude. Aha! Boom! It's like, I knew you were going to do that. Every anime character ever does that. So now you know, okay? But yeah, that's Sony though. Um, Hiero, or Iron, or Steel Skin in Japanese. 
Um, so this is a technique that Shinigami do not have. Um, Quincy's kind of have a variant of this. That's kind of their Blute Vena. It's their defensive skill, okay? Shinigami, actually, now that I think about it, don't really have a primarily defensive skill. You know, like, individual Zonpakuto abilities aside, Keto aside, there's Keto that can, like, protect you and make shields and stuff. But in terms of, like, their flesh, it's, like, regular flesh that you can, like, cut. They're a little more durable than, like, your average human or your average soul, but, yeah. The, um, Hollows, though, they have the Hiero. They have their, their iron or their steel skin, okay? And so, once again, the description is there, you know, you have to have a little bit more of a, of a punch or, like, a little bit more of a stabbing motion to break through to them. Um, this first showed off when, uh, Yami attacked, you know, the world of living with Ukiora, and Yoroichi appeared and started beating the crap out of Yami, and he was like, oh, I could feel that, like, concussive trauma. But later on, Yoroichi was pretty bandaged up. She was like, man, that, st that, that skin is nothing to joke about. Like, I was pounding the crap out of that big lug, but man, I got some damage there. Later on, Urahara develops an armor that Yoroichi can wear, uh, seen here with, oh my god, the... Oh, they're so round. Why are... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the armor that she wears, um... Packs a punch. It's really large and in char. Okay. So, yeah, it's armor. And she attempts to use this against Aizen, but Aizen had gone beyond the petty hero at that point. So, Aizen was tough, but he was tough for other reasons. Hogyo cool BS reasons. So, but yeah, the hero, steel skin. Um, the hollow that had the best hero was uh, Noithra. Uh, he stated this to Kempachi. Even Kempachi's, not all of Kempachi's attacks managed to break through him. Uh, he was able to just handle tenses on Getsu like it was nothing like that. That one scene where Ichigo is like, he just got finished fighting Grim Joe, and he's like, all right, Noiser, bring it on. And he goes to stab him, and Noitra just grabs tenses on Getsu, and like the sparks just fly off. It's like the sword's running through his hand. He's like, man, is this the best you got? Is this your Bankai? God, you suck. And just like tossing him in a side of stuff. Um, Kempachi was able to break through it once he got the rhythm of it down, but you know, his Hario was really strong. Also, going back to Sonido. Uh, Zomari, Zomari Reru, the uh, spot at number seven was the one that could use the best Sony dough, apparently, because, like, you know, Ukiora, when he goes into his release, and Stark, when he's zipping around, their Sony dough seem to be faster than Zomari's, but Zomari has that Gemulus, uh, Gemulus Sony dough, where he's able to make, like, clones of himself, like, after image clones. So, all right, Zomari, you didn't really have much to go on already, so I'll, I'll give it to you, Zomari. You you had the best Sony dough out there, and Noitra had the best Hiero. All right, um... Let's see here. So this is a special technique that is very unique. Shinigami kind of have this too. Actually, the Quincy's kind of have it too. So I guess it's not that unique. Um, it's the, This is the one word that I am not sure how to pronounce. Descorera. That's the best I got. It means uh, drawing back or opening in Spanish and loosed void in Japanese. This is the hollow technique to open up the garganta. More specifically, it's the espada and a wrong car way of opening up the garganta. Because I think the regular Menos classes, like the Gillians and the Adhujas and regular hollows, they have a different name for this technique, which is more of like just ripping open the void so they can get into the world of the living. But espada and a wrong cars have a more elegant way of this where they don't, like, they don't grab the air and, like, rip it open. They just kind of, like, tap the air, and then, like, a segmented passageway opens up to the Garganta. All right, that void space in between realms, okay? So, Ukiora is really fly when he does this. He's like, Yami, we're going back. Bing! And it's just like... <laughs> there's, like, a static sound when it opens up in the anime. So, yeah, that, that's the opening up of the Garganta. Ukiora also used a, a variant of this called Garganta Broadcast, where he was able to show, like, like he's talking to Orihime, like, you know, you must come with me, woman, back to Huecomundo. If you do not come with us, your friends will be killed. And then he opens up little mini Garganta, like, computer, like, TV screens, so Orihime can watch, in real time, all of the horrible stuff that's happening to her friends. So, there's also a variant of that. I wonder if, I, can, can, can they, can Ukiora just do that whenever he wants? Can Ukiora just be chilling out in Lost Noches and being like, I am bored. I wonder what's on the Garganta. And he just opens up a little mini Garganta and he just like watches random humans like, you know, he's just walking around the human world like, do, 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 do. oh my balls! He just got hit and he's like, Ukiora's like, ah, ah, 
these humans are truly hilarious. Uh, uh. So maybe that's what they do to kill time. If they have the ability to just watch and like observe anything they want in the human world at any time using the Garganta, I guess you could do that, right? So yeah, that's their ability there. Um, I could honestly do a whole video on the Garganta because it's like this. At first, we figured it was just the void space in between the world of the living and the Hueco Mundo. Later on, we find out, no, it's like, think of like the Garganta, like an, a deep ocean. And the different realms are all like little bubbles in that infinite ocean. Um, so, you know, the you know, Soul Society's here, Hueco Mundo's there, World Living's there. And the Garganta's like that space that connects them. The Dangai is more of like a permanent bridge between Soul Society and the Living World. But the Garganta, if you want to get anywhere else, like the Valley of Screams or Hueco Mundo or any other realm, you pretty much have to use the Garganta to get there, right? Um, and you can use it to kind of slip in and out of reality. Um, the Quincy's could do something similar with their shadow powers, at least the Sternritter could. Uh, regular Quincy's, maybe not so much, but yeah, they had that, like, that shadow ability where it's like the Silburn and their, like, icy Quincy realm existed, like, parallel to the Soul Society, so I'm not really sure if that involved the Garganta. It, it probably did in some way, shape, or form, but it was more of, like, a parallel realm that Yuha and the Sternritters existed in, parallel to the, like, it was like, it was like, apparently, there was a lot of this that wasn't explained, because it seemed like there was like a stasis or something because Basby's like a thousand years old so maybe you don't age in this other realm I, I, I don't know how it works but anyway um, the next ability is the pesquisa technique and pesquisa means inquiry in Spanish in Japanese it means a sensory circuit or sensory nerve so this is a technique it's it's the once again it's really basic it's the sensing technique it's the oh my god his reatsu is over 9,000 something like that it's the sensory technique um there was a variant of this where it seems like some Espada can use this more like they can sense a way. Others need to have other methods in order to gauge. Like when Kempachi showed up to fight against Tesla, Noitera's like, wait a second, I feel like this guy's really strong. So Noitera took his finger, planted it into the ground, and then he used like a radar sonar variant where like his Riatsu shot across the ground, hit Kempachi, and so Noitera could get a proper gauge on his spiritual pet pressure. He's like, holy crap, Tesla, get out of there! And he just gets cut down so Noitra is the fifth Espada but he wasn't able to accurately gauge Kenpachi's Riatsu from a distance or maybe he was suppressing it because Kenpachi uses all those different things to like suppress his power maybe Noitra used his Pesquisa and he could like sense like what Kenpachi's true potential was that like Unohana unlocked later and he's like holy crap you need to get out of there Tesla maybe something like that um, it's once again, you have to keep in mind, not every Espada is going to be trained, not just like how not every Shinigami is going to all be Keto Masters or Shunpo Masters. Same thing with the Hollows and the Arankars. It's like, you know, Noitera's Hiero was really, really top level, but maybe he didn't train in Pesquisa that much. And he's like, I don't really have a good sensory nerve, so in order to really sense power, I need to use that, like, radar, sonar shit. And if I don't do that, I can't really accurately gauge power. Um... You know, others might not have been that good at Sonido or Seros. They might have eschewed that to train in other abilities, right? So there's that. Um, there's high-speed regeneration, which is high-speed regeneration. I don't think this technique was ever given an actual name in Spanish. It's just high-speed regeneration. Uh, probably the reason for that is that's a technique that regular hollows can possess. Uh, but once you become in a wrong car and later in a spada... Ukiora explained that a lot of hollows remove that ability in order to gain stronger abilities in terms of battle power. So, like, you could see, like, Zomari getting rid of discarding his high-speed regeneration to get more levels in Sonido. So everything has to be kind of balanced. Um, Ukiora, though, was the sole Espada he stated that still had that high-speed regeneration technique. However, high-speed regeneration, it sounds really cool, so you might be thinking, why would you ever want to get rid of that? You know, why would you get rid of... I mean, yeah, Seros and Sonido and Hiero... Those things are really cool, but high-speed regeneration is really cool, too. So, like, why would you get rid of, like, high-speed regeneration for a stronger Sero? That, that, honestly, to me, that seems like the high-speed regen would be better. But the way Ukiora explains it, you kind of make sense out of it, because he's like, high-speed regeneration can't restore organs. So it's like, oh, so if it's like, you get a hole blasted in your chest... 
you can heal the wound, like the hole will close up, like your like muscles and skin will go back, and maybe your bone, but your lungs are gone. You're if you get blasted in the stomach, your stomach is gone. You know, um, I would actually like to be interested in seeing the anatomy of a Roncars and a Spada because they have organs. Like Ukiora confirmed that, but are they like the same organs that humans and Shinigami have? I'm not sure. You know, uh, but it's like Ukiora is like ah. Ichigo blasted my flim fl my flim fligabadoo with his Sero. I can't restore my flim fligabadoo, so therefore I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> that's a that's the most crucial organ for all Espadas is the flim fligabadoo. Uh, you know, um, it's like a Rick and Morty sketch all of a sudden. But yeah, so it, it's handy if you get like an arm or a leg ripped off because you can restore that. Something very useful to have in a Kubo manga because you're gonna get your arms and legs ripped off quite a bit. Um, but beyond that, like, if you get a serious gut shot or a head shot, you know, part of your brain, that's not coming back. So I could kind of see, I could still see applications for it, but I could see why some of the Espada were maybe, like, looking down their, their abilities and they're like, hmm, I can gain an extra boost and I can gain an extra level in Sero, but I have to discard one of these... And I'll get rid of high speed regen. I don't need Sony Doe either. I'll, I'll gain an extra level. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put all my stats in Sero. Just like everything Sero. You know, all I could do is show up and fire a giant Sero. I suck at everything else, right? I'm just gonna specialty class into that, okay? Hey guys, so just something really quick to mention here at the end. Probably a lot of people are wondering why didn't you talk about the Resurrection? You know, like, the main ability that Aronkars have. Like I said, I was gonna hold off until the Espada, but maybe I just felt like I should mention it, because it is an ability that, like, Aronkars can use, not just the Espada. So, yeah, Resurrection, it's Resurrection. Essentially, what it does is, when an Aronkar releases their Zanpakuto, the sword itself does not actually change, or whatever weapon their Zanpakuto turns out to be. That does not change. In fact, the sword itself actually disappears, melds with the Aronkar, and they get their hollow powers that they naturally had when they were Gileons or Adhujas or Vasto Lordes, it returns to them. So, for example, Shaolong Kufeng, when he was an Adhujas, he had these really long, like, razor-sharp claws. When he's in a wrong car, he doesn't have those. They go away. He's like a normal human, like, in terms of his body. But when he takes out his Zanpakuto, Teherita, he activates it, you know, Snip Teherita, he goes into his Resurrection form, which gives him his sharp nails and his sharp little tail whip thing. Um, and same thing with, like, Ilford Grans. When he goes into it, he gets his bull horns back. Um, Edorad Leones, he gets his ability to, like, summon, like, fire and lava and that kind of powers that he has there um yeah it's almost as if yeah the hollow powers that they had are stored in the sword itself and then they get returned to them when they activate it um it is you know possible to constantly stay in that release state uh when chiruchi um sandwich when chewy sandwich used it um she removed parts of her resurrection when fighting uryu and uryu was like wow that's really cool i didn't know you could just you know modify your resurrections like that and chiruchi's like no, we can't. Not normally, anyway. You know, I'm literally basically, like, burning off my limbs right now. I can never go back to my original state just for more battle power. So, that's the Resurrection. Um, and there's a lot more unique abilities with that, as you would figure. Like, Haribel's ability to manipulate water. Um, Noitera grows six arms and the scythe blades and all that stuff that's, like, very unique to them that we'll address more in their spot of videos. Um, alright, but anyway, yeah, so those are... Those are the main techniques that all hollows can do, at least in some limited capacity. We talked about hollow evolution. We talked about hollow powers. I suck at Spanish. We're all aware of this. And it's going to continue once we get into the Espada discussion. But let me know below on some really badass, like if you're, if you know Portuguese or Russian, Russian would be cool. Russian is like, that would probably be another language I could see Kubo, like if the story continued. He's like, I'm going to introduce a group that uses French. Russian would have maybe been his next choice. Honestly, I could see, like, the Quincy's having a Russian, like, backdrop motive, and I think that would have worked better, you know, or, you know, the same as the German. I think that would have worked in just the way it's it's spoken. So, come up with some really cool, like, like I don't know, like, what's, uh, what's Russian for, like, you know, skull death laser? I don't care, it probably sounds awesome, right? You know, it's just like, he's like, moon, sky, death beam. I don't know, come up with something cool, right? 
Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching signing out. Yo! <laughs>